Hello there and welcome to today's book review. Today I'm reviewing Atomic Habits by James Clear. James Clear is an, an American author who's best known for the book Atomic Habits, which I'm about to review right now. Let me just get the book from my bookshelf. So this is the book I'm reviewing today. It says Tiny Changes, Remarkable Results, Atomic Habits, James Clear. Over 3 million copies sold. That's what it says here. So James Clear wrote this Atomic Habits book way back a few years ago. In fact, I think it was in 2018 that he wrote this book, if I'm not mistaken. Atomic Habits is one of those books that you will pick up and um, are going to want to... <laughs> Really look at your habits critically. For me, it's a book that after reading it the very first time, got me started. You know, if you've watched my previous videos before, you might have come across a video where I was talking about, you know, slightly before COVID, um, everything seemed to be going really well for me and I was on track to uh, flying off into, I don't know, some wonderland <laughs> in terms of my business uh, performance and profitability and then all of a sudden COVID came and I had to put a quick automatic halt to my journey to wonderland. <laughs> you might have seen that video right? Now as I was trying to see how I can uh, get back the momentum and I, I use, I, I, I like to say my momentum, how do I gain back that momentum I had before COVID-19? So as I was sitting in my house, reading as many books as I could, trying to think about how do I get my, my momentum back, I picked up James Clear's Atomic Habits. <laughs> and I think in terms of getting me back on track, getting my momentum back, I, I can attribute at least 20% of uh, that. No, let me be a little bit more fair. I will actually attribute 70% of getting me, getting my momentum back to this book, Atomic Habits. Because when I read Atomic Habits, it, it simply was talking about, um, the biggest lesson I got from Atomic Habits is, you being able to change the environment and that the environment really matters when it comes to you adopting or changing your habits. So how have you designed your life essentially? How is your life designed? Is it designed in such a way that it will encourage you to implement good habits that you need for you to achieve what you want to achieve? So for me, what that really meant was, I mean, I, I, I was sitting there and complaining about my momentum, but meanwhile, people were, life was going on. People were doing events because my, my majority of my, my business is driven through workshops and training courses, basically. And as I was sitting in my house, being so relaxed and comfortable, you know how it is when the frog is in water and the heat, is, the pressure is going up, you're so comfortable in that water. And I was like that. And so when I picked up Atomic Habits, I mean, it was like, you know, Mukonki, how have you designed your environment so that you can get out of this comfortable, you know, water? Because it's, it's soon going to start boiling. And I think Atomic Habits woke me up because it got me to think of, whoa, I'm here complaining about how do I get my, 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 my momentum back. Meanwhile, there are people that are actually doing workshops. Ah, what do I do? I, I send you a workshop. <laughs> I quickly send you the workshop. And, you know, most of the times I, work, I like to work in reverse. So I set the date first and then I started looking at all the other elements of ensuring that this workshop was a success and this was because of James Clear Clear's um, design your environment is your environment conducive is, is does it encourage you to implement the habits that you want to implement so that's one of the biggest lessons that I got from James Clear's atomic habits there are many 
And let me just run through the others that I can recall. Um, the biggest lesson you get from Atomic Habits is the habit loop, which talks about the cue, the craving, the response, and the reward. So it basically talks about these four concepts. And these are concepts that other people have actually spoken about. So a cue is like what triggers this habit. And then the craving is what gets you to do what you, that habit. The response is the actual action that you get to do to, to implement that habit. And the reward is what you feel after doing that. And so what James Clear says is that if you want to develop good habits, you need to also look at this habit lob. Because let's look at a bad habit, for example. For those people that smoke, what's the cue? The cue might be... Um, I don't know, you're hanging out with colleagues who are smoking and, okay, you now get the craving, you want to smoke. So you get the cigarette. The craving is now the need to, to want to smoke. The response is to ask for the cigarette. And if your colleagues are nice friends, they will hand you over that cigarette and you're going to smoke the cigarette. The reward is the feeling you get from smoking that cigarette, right? So that's an example of the cue craving, response, and reward. So what James Clear says is that if you want to develop good habits, you also need to map, because for bad habits, it's so easy. I mean, the craving, the cue, the cravings, the rewards, they are so easy to get. But when it comes to good habits, it's actually a little bit harder and you need to do some kind of work. So what's the cue? For example, if you want to be healthy, if you want to work on your financial health, uh, yeah, financial health as well, right? But I'm actually, what I, want, what I wanted to refer to was the, your physical health. So if you want to improve your physical health, what is the cue? The cue could be that you are a little bit overweight right now. You are supposed to be around 75 kgs and you are now maybe around 80, 90, 100, quite unfortunate if you are when you're supposed to be around 70. So that's the cue. You are slightly overweight. What should be your craving in that case? So you need to design your craving in such a way that you desire to lose that weight. So how have you designed your environment so that it gives you that desire to lose that weight? It goes maybe to your fridge. For me, I mean, something that I've deliberately done in my house is look at what I stock in my fridge. Um, I'm very health conscious. And so what I stock in my fridge has to be healthy to a very large extent. And so what's the craving? So if you are slightly overweight, you definitely want to design that craving to be something that is healthy. Your response other than just the, your response in this case is designing your fridge to make sure that it's stocked with healthy food and not unhealthy food. The reward is that you are now able to nourish yourself in healthy food that is going to result in you maintaining a healthy weight. So that's a simple example and I hope, I hope it made sense. Um, the other way you could look at this one is um, your cue is your overweight. Your craving is to lose the weight, right? Your response is to design your environment in such a way that it helps you to lose weight. So, for example, make sure that you've prepared your, your running shoes and your clothing for, for, for running or jogging in the morning or going to the gym and put it somewhere close by so that you can, you know, when you wake up, immediately dress up to go to the gym. Or when you knock off from work, you drop your, your work bag and you've you know, changed into your gym, gym clothing and you're ready to go to the gym or to go running or jogging. The reward you get is that you feel, you know, you feel nice and eventually we expect you to start losing weight. So that is what James Clear talks about in this book in terms of um, the cue, the craving, the response and the reward. And this book is called Atomic Habits because James Clear is also talking about small habits result in bigger changes. So many of us um, like to focus on big things, right? And, and <laughs> yeah, big things. They're good sometimes. But James Clear also wants to 
highlight the fact that little things that you do every day build up or stack up they compound to the bigger change that you might not have expected if i go back to the example that i've given you just a slight change in your heating in in the way you eat in in in, in how active you are might result at the end of some period into a big change in terms of your health and so little little habits stack up to you know big changes in terms of um in terms of habits so don't be afraid of tiny little habits because these are also going to actually help you to attain your overall uh, to change your habits from bad to good habits now if you've got a bad habit and you'd like to break it james clear has got some very insightful suggestions as to how you go about doing that and one way is to make the bad habits completely unattractive. How can you make those bad habits unattractive such that you don't even want to go near them? So let's talk about an example of uh, smoking. How can you make smoking so unattractive such that you won't even feel the desire to pick up that cigarette and smoke it? So if you start reading about the harmful effects of smoking on your lungs and for your body, for your health, and that those that smoke don't live as much in terms of life expectancy, if the more you read about that, you are going to start, you know, this habit of smoking is, is going to be undesirable. Same goes to drinking alcohol. So the more you read about the bad effects of smoking or drinking, the more this habit becomes undesirable. Okay, so the way to break a bad habit is to make it undesirable. And you, you can make it undesirable by maybe looking at the bad effects of that habit on you. And the other one is also just your personality change. How can you, and this you can do drastically. If you want to develop good habits, look at the people that have the habits that you want to emulate. So if you would, again, I mean, this is an example that I've already given, so I might as well continue with it. So if you are a smoker and you want to stop smoking, when you meet up with colleagues that are smoking, and this is actually an example that James Clear gives in his book, when you, when you hang out with colleagues or friends that smoke and they offer you a cigarette, all you need to do is tell them, I'm not a smoker. Don't say, I don't smoke. When you say I don't smoke, it means, uh, oh, I'm not smoking. It means that you, you are a smoker, but for today, you just don't feel like smoking. But when you say I'm not a smoker, it's about your personality. It talks about you as an individual. Okay. Let's, let me give another example. If you are um, a health conscious person and somebody asks you, Mkonki, um, what do you like to do? You, you, I would like to say, I'm, I'm, I'm a jogger. I love jogging. I'm a jogger. That example personifies me in terms of what I am. Not that I, I like, I, I like to jog. I, I jogged yesterday, but I'm a jogger, meaning that this is what I do. It's part of my lifestyle. So if somebody says, I am not a smoker, it's about the personality. And so another way of breaking bad habits is completely changing your personality to emulate the good habits that you want to develop. So that is another way of ensuring that you break the bad habits. One great advantage about James Clear book is that at each, at the end of each chapter, it actually summarizes the actionable insights that you need to take in order for you to implement what he's suggesting in his chapter. So if you are in a hurry, all you can do is actually just read the chapter summaries and you get the essence of that chapter. Um, another thing that James Clear talks about that I think is um, applicable is the two minute rule. Uh, and I like to think of the two minute rule as don't think about something too much. If you need to go and work out, immediately you get out of bed. Don't start dreaming about, um, you know, uh, other things. Um, dream about that and dream about that and dream about. Get out of bed. Give yourself two minutes to get out of that bed, get dressed and get on the road. That is the two minute rule. Don't waste so much time reflecting on something and all you can do is just quickly for example if the house is dirty you've got dirty dish uh, dishes that you need to wash 
all you need to, don't think about it after eating don't think about oh now i need to wash the plates and do the what just count up to whatever i want to go wash those dishes so that's the two minute rule i mean get get quick get get doing quickly within two minutes get done and get out okay that's the two minute rule and so this is what atomic habits is about it's um i think it's a book that has got quite a lot of practical aspects to get you started developing good habits it's a book that i highly recommend you get reading uh there's a there's a bit of some disadvantages for some people i mean for me the books that i actually review on my channel are books that i've applied that i've read that i've found value in if i haven't found value in a book you won't actually see it on my book review i will not talk about it so when you see me reviewing a book it means that it means that i actually drew and found value i found some actionable insight in that book but for some people an advantage a disadvantage could be that um, you know james clear has been too vague when it comes to health i mean people have got different health issues it's not just about eating that makes people put on weight because it, it does talk substantially about health uh, losing weight in this book and so there are some people that are a bit tricked when it when it comes to him talking about you know how do you lose weight you don't just lose weight like that because people put gain weight in different their medical reasons is that and that of course we understand but for me i mean i didn't go into that deep thinking as to what james clear implied when he was giving an example of getting physically healthy i took it for what it was on the surface i didn't even want to go deep into the detail trying to look at research with health and what i got the lesson from james clear it is a book that has really helped me get back on track in terms of my work and my personal life and it is a book i highly recommend you pick up today i picked up mine in a bookstore in zambia and i believe you can find one in a bookstore anywhere across the world well this is all i had to share guys in today's book review if you enjoyed today's book review don't forget to leave a comment if you've read this book by the way don't you forget to also leave a comment how did atomic habits change your life i mean how did it improve your lifestyle in what aspects of your life did atomic habits help you i would really love to hear your views so drop the comment in the comment section below don't forget to smash the like icon and also the bell icon don't forget to subscribe don't you forget to share and uh thank you so much if you've already subscribed to my channel for those that have subscribed if you haven't subscribed to my channel already consider subscribing to my channel by clicking the subscribe button it's at the top it is up here Click subscribe right now. Thank you so much for watching and see you next time.